What's up, everybody? Welcome to more Gutty Mo Gory. My name is Billy. Today, I want to talk about my favorite movie of all time. Fallen. With Denzel Washington, John Goodman, Donald Sutherland, the late great James Gandolfini, directed by Gregory Hoblet, who also did Primal Fear. So if you haven't seen that movie, check that out. That's a great movie as well. So Denzel Washington plays Detective John Hobbs. His cop partner is John Goodman as Jonesy, and Donald Sutherland plays the boss or the lieutenant or whoever's in charge of the department as Stanton. James Gandolfini's character is Lou, who is another cop within the department, but he provides most of the humor for the story and some of the nonchalant dialogue that's in the movie. But his role is very significant, especially in the scene close to Hobbs. The dynamic between these four characters is very smooth and natural and very believable. It's easy to watch. It just seems like they could be four cops just doing their job. I also think John Goodman and Denzel Washington's chemistry are excellent in this movie. It's also very fun to see James Gandolfini interact with them as well. Uh, this is before The Sopranos came out, so he wasn't really as famous. Fallen came out in 1998, and the catch line reads, Detective John Hobbs is searching for a criminal he's already met, already caught, and already killed. Don't trust a soul. Now, before you go into watching this movie, just remember, every gesture, every word, open your eyes, look around sometime, because something is always happening. But when it happens, people don't always see it, understand it, or accept it, because everything is motive. Sickness is motive. The reason I recommend this movie is because I've never seen a movie with so much emphasis on every piece of dialogue, every camera angle, every shot is significant to the plot of the movie. Fallen is a slow burn supernatural thriller similar to Seven and True Detective. If you've seen either one of those, you're going to like Fallen. I would say Seven is a phenomenal movie, but the practicality of how the murders are committed would be hard to believe someone could pull that off in real life. And Fallen, although it does have a supernatural element that would be hard to believe for some people, but the practicality of how those murders are committed in this movie is very easy to understand and see it happening, which makes the story really compelling. So before I get into the details of why I think this is one of the greatest movies, definitely my favorite, is I came across it at random. My friends were over hanging out. We were playing dominoes and cards and swimming, and this movie happened to be on in the background. Once everyone had left, I caught the last five minutes of the movie or so. And what happens at the end of this movie made me rewatch it from the beginning and play it back twice. Fallen also features Elias Codius as Edgar Reese and Embeth Davids as Greta Milano. Both have crucial and pivotal roles for the whole story within this movie. Edgar Reese literally sets the tone for the entire movie from the beginning as he's walking towards death row to be put into the gas chamber. He's singing and dancing, and the song that he's singing is Time Is On My Side by the Rolling Stones. This song is played throughout the rest of the movie in very significant and interesting ways that I think makes this movie really awesome in terms of how they use every aspect of filmmaking, whether it be the sound or the visuals or even the text. And Greta Milano's character is the backbone of the story. Everything that happens is because of something that had happened to her father previously. So without her character, the story doesn't have much development and we don't learn any of the historical context of why this killer is acting the way that he does. So Denzel Washington's character as John Hobbs provides some narration throughout the movie from the very beginning to the end. Now, as you're watching the movie, you kind of have to wonder Who's really doing the narrating? Is it John Hobbs or is it Azazel or is it both at two different times given the circumstances and the scenes within the movie? Now within the narration there are some cool quotes and I'd say the most compelling and significant quote to the movie is the every gesture, every word. Because to me that's that's the movie. If you when you watch it you got to pay attention to every gesture and every word. But there are also some other very cool quotes that not only correlate to the movie, but life in general. 
And one of those quotes is, there are moments which mark your life. Moments which you realize nothing will ever be the same. Time is divided into two parts, before this and after this. Sometimes you can feel such a moment coming. That's the test. So I tell myself, times like these, strong people keep moving forward anyway, no matter what they're going to find. So it's kind of a long quote, but it's really strong and significant. And to me, it hit me when I watched the movie because I was like, this movie changed the way I watched movies from before it to after it. I want to talk about some of the scenes that stood out to me. And one of them was choosing people. Now in this scene, people are just passing by each other. Someone gets a sandwich and then goes to their boss. Then he tells his boss to take the sandwich and shove it. So that scene is very basic and simple and doesn't seem like much is happening. But after you watch it one or two or three or four or five times, you kind of see all the little details of what makes that scene so interesting. And it's very cool how they choreographed that scene. And I do like how they made that scene seem like harmless. Like nothing's really happening, but a lot is happening which goes along with the quote of something is always happening, just people don't always see it or understand it or accept it. And to me, that was another quote that has to do with the movie in general. It's all about John Hobbs seeing the evil and then trying to understand the evil and then accepting the evil. So Greta Milano's character also helps John Hobbs understand the evil that he's dealing with. She also has all these supernatural concepts because she's a religion or a theology teacher in a college. So her knowledge of the supernatural helps progress the story. Another cool aspect of Edgar Reese and Greta Milano's characters are when Edgar Reese's character is being shown or Azazel, it's through a different lens. So the color will change on the screen. And that was awesome to see in terms of style because most films usually maintain a similar visual throughout um, unless they go you know in the past or something and I guess this would be a similar context but it's very cool how they use the different color to show whoever Azazel had possessed at that time. Greta Milano's character on the other hand anytime she is with John Hobbs in significant roles where they're talking about very important issues about Azazel, the camera angle will change to an overhead shot as if someone is watching over them. It's these subtle camera changes that I find very interesting about the storytelling of the movie without having to explain something. They just change the camera angle or the visual and that sets the tone or provides information to the viewer. The more you watch it, the more you see how the camera changes and the different colors and tones and the different perspectives provide more depth to the story. Even Donald Sutherland's role as the sergeant or the boss who really didn't care about the supernatural stuff. He just wanted the cops to do their job and solve the crimes and move on to the next one. But some of the dialogue that he has is very telling to the overall plot of the story. For instance, he's talking to John Hobbs about what's going on and he just happens to say the words, you know, the egos upstairs. And that line to me was really cool because it has to do with the higher power, the supernatural essence, but he was just making a statement. My favorite scene is close to Hobbs. This scene is where, similar to the choosing people, some people are just walking by each other and then one of them starts to sing. So as they start singing, they pass someone, the next person starts singing and then so on and so on. And it's the theme song to the whole movie itself time is on my side and the more they sing the more John Hobbs is getting curious and like what's going on and he kind of already has an idea of what might be happening so this is the scene where he's starting to understand he's definitely dealing with a stronger force and not just a human so another scene that's really significant is one more surprise which is actually twofold because at the end of the movie there is one more surprise after that but this scene is significant because it has to do with John Hobbs finally accepting his fate 
and willing to sacrifice himself in order to save a small part of humanity or just try to kill this demon out of spite because of what the demon has done to him and his family. So one aspect of this movie that I really like was the idea and the concept of demons moving through touch. So most scary movies, a house is haunted and then the house possesses the people within the house. So when that person moves out, a new person moves in and then those person become possessed. So a lot of times, even in the reality shows of Ghost Adventures and whatnot, they have similar theories that the house is haunted and therefore those who move into it are subject to being haunted. But the idea of this movie is that the demon itself moves through individuals by touch and once they possess someone, they know and understand everything about that person from history. So they not only have knowledge of the history in general throughout time, but also that individual's life. So this is really cool because it goes with the theory that houses aren't haunted, people are haunted. And people can be haunted at any given time. So one minute these people are normal and the next minute they're a demon. And that was very interesting because when you think about a lot of murders or a lot of crimes that happen, even you know mass murders or mass shootings or what, serial killers, what could possess someone to do that? Well, obviously a demon who can move through touch and take over someone's body have them commit these crimes and then escape through another person and then that person who committed those crimes has no idea what just happened i thought it was very very compelling and interesting and the idea was i wouldn't say profound because it probably has been done or uh, talked about in some movies before but the way they executed in this movie is perfect and on the same concept of demons moving through touch and possessing people and understanding that person's life and history it also has its own personality. So when they take over someone, they become that demon, meaning that they are left-handed in the case of Azazel and they like to sing, uh, which is why every time he touches someone, they always reach out with the left hand or they overemphasize movements with the left hand. Um, everything that they do signifies that that person is taken over by the demon. And they still do it in a very subtle way. So if you're not paying attention and you don't pick up on it, it won't mean anything and that's why i think the scene called choosing people was really cool because every time the people would pass by it would always be the left hand and once the person gets a sandwich they switch to their left hand and that was kind of an obvious take on it but it was still really cool how the demon was just like yep i got this body now so it was just really cool and i like how they showed the different aspects of the demon's personality once they take over somebody but also understanding that person's own personality to then manipulate the people that they're talking to. Now the movie did come out in 1998, but to make it relevant for today's time, it's kind of funny how a demon trying to pass through touch would have a hard time doing so with social distancing. So if we're all six feet apart, uh, maybe the government is trying to minimize the passings of demons and not so much diseases. Eh. Just a thought. Some honorable mention characters of this movie would be Art and Sam. Art was John Hobbs' brother, and Sam was Art's son. They're crucial to the story because once Azazel targets them, that makes it personal for John Hobbs in a way that he can't turn his back. So he seeks out vengeance by any means necessary, and this is his ultimate downfall because he ends up having to sacrifice himself in order to protect Sam. Now, if they were going to make a sequel to this movie or some kind of follow-up, I would like to follow Sam's story as he gets older and tries to learn about what happened to not only his father, but also his uncle, John Hobbs, and why he went from such a decorated officer to a disgraced hero, which is the same thing that happened to Robert Milano, which was Greta Milano's father in the past. So history would just keep repeating itself, but with different characters. I would like to see that as a follow-up in order for Sam's character to have some resolution. And speaking of some of the honorable mentions, other side characters, I'm not sure if they were just extras or people who were cast, but they did have lines in the movie. And even in some of the scenes when they were just passing by each other, for instance, in the close to Hobbs scene, they may have had one or two lines, but the people who delivered those lines did it with very good precision same with the girl 
who gets possessed by Azazel after John Hobbs ends up killing the teacher. So it was like suicide by cop. That was what Azazel made it look like. And that put John Hobbs in a precarious situation where he was then going to have to be arrested for murder. When in fact, according to John Hobbs, he was trying to kill the killer. But really it was just an innocent teacher. And the idea of Azazel being able to go from one body to another after the person that he has possessed is killed, but in the sake of one breath. It was only a short distance that the demon could travel before it suffocates. When it takes over the girl and she starts singing, that lets the audience know and John Hobbs understand that just killing somebody who's possessed doesn't solve the problem. And this further helps push him to make the decision to sacrifice himself. He would rather do what he could to save his family, Sam and Greta Milano, instead of just giving up and going to jail. The cat's about to come out the bag now because it's going to get into some spoilers, super spoilers, like the spoiler, which would be at the end of the movie, a cat runs out of the cabin and Azazel says, oh, you forgot something. I want to tell you about the time that I almost died. And that was the line that I caught at the end of the movie that made me rewatch it from the beginning because I was just shook. I was like, what the heck? That was random. So I went back and watched it. And after I watched it the second time, the very opening in the sequence in the movie, he says, I want to tell you about the time I almost died. The fact that they used the opening line and tied it to the very end of the movie was very detailed and they didn't waste no writing. And so I really like how they tied it together. Also, what was cool about watching it multiple times was there was a cat that ran into the cabin earlier in the movie that the first few times I watched it, I didn't really notice it because I wasn't really paying attention into some of the detail. It just John Hobbs was driving up to the cabin. That was all that was happening. But they just happened to show a cat run underneath the cabin. And I was like, ah, oh, that makes perfect sense that later on in the movie that that cat would be living there. And once John Hobbs had died, Azazel had left the body. He's got to find something to go into in terms of possessing so it can survive. And the cat just happened to be there. And Azazel probably knew that that cat was there uh, ahead of time on some level. So that was really interesting. There was also a scene where a cat was on a balcony like he was talking to John Hobbs. The cat was just going back and forth and had his back all arched up like he was about to fight something. And I just thought that was a cool little foreshadow. Also the part where the cat rubs against someone's leg and there's always subtle noises that is made when the demon is transferring from person to animal or person to person. And I almost think they didn't necessarily need to do that because uh, it's almost too obvious at some point. Once you watch it a few times, it gets redundant, but it's still perfect. And I think that's really cool that they did that and just add a little element of uh, finesse to some of the special effects in the movie even though there wasn't hardly any which was cool too because it's more of a practical movie thanks for watching i hope this video makes you want to go check out fallen if you've already seen fallen i hope this video makes you want to go rewatch fallen and pick up on all the little details that you may or may not have known about previously now i plan to do more reviews on other scary movies some might not put fallen in the category of scary movies but if you think about it, it's definitely scary. I also plan to post about music, primarily focused on Sacramento artists, but I may branch out into other genres, so stay tuned for that. Thank you guys for watching. More gutty, more gory. And in the meantime, make sure to go ahead and like, share, follow, subscribe, all that hashtag. And on that note, time is on my side. Yes, it is.